Universally recognized as the ballooning capital of the world, Albuquerque, New Mexico boasts a bevy of legendary balloonists and annually draws hundreds of thousands of pilots, crew members, and spectators from around the world to the Albuquerque International Balloon Fiesta. There, old friends reunite and visitors witness spectacular balloon launches and dazzling special events. But Albuquerque's ballooning history began long before the inaugural Balloon Fiesta event in 1972. The first recorded balloon flight in Albuquerque occurred in 1882 when an enterprising saloon owner, Park Van Tassel, launched a balloon made of cattle intestines and sailed into ballooning history. That adventure would inspire other flights by Albuquerque balloonists in the coming years. Park Van Tassel, he is uh, Albuquerque, Albuquerque's very first aeronaut. Uh, he uh, was a saloon keeper, uh, had a saloon called the Elite Saloon. It was in the Opera House, Albuquerque Opera House at 2nd Street and Railroad Avenue. That's central now, but it used to be called Railroad. On the 4th of July, 1882, he inflated a 30,000 cubic foot gas balloon, and the gas was illuminating, illuminating gas. Uh, it's coal gas that is used for lighting and for cooking. He had planned to take a, uh, a passenger, I think it was a journalist, uh, to report on the flight. But the balloon was only partially inflated, but the crowd wanted him to go. And he asked the passenger to step out of the basket, and he dropped a full gas, a full bag of sand, which is ballast for a gas balloon. Uh, he kind of panicked, actually. He, you don't usually drop a full bag right away, uh, but he did, and he hit a, a spectator on the head, who later sued. But the balloon did take off, and uh, it went way up. It went up to 14,200 feet, where you have trouble breathing, not much oxygen up there. And so he panicked, and he opened the vent, and he came down really hard. Uh, he landed in a cornfield in uh, Old Town, uh, but it was a successful flight. This fellow went on to become a world-famous balloonist, but he started right here in Albuquerque. And he went all over the western states doing parachute jumps from balloons and uh, other balloon flights, distance flights, uh, all over the west coast, out to Hawaii to Australia, to Southeast Asia, uh, Africa, Europe, um, all over the world. He was the first Albuquerque balloonist. And so in a way, he took ballooning from Albuquerque to the rest of the world. And now the rest of the world comes here to Albuquerque. Balloon fever would not take hold, however, until 90 years later, when another enterprising Albuquerque resident, Sid Cutter, threw together a ballooning event to commemorate the 50th anniversary of KOB Radio. I mean, the whole reason for the first balloon fiesta was KOB. It was their 50th birthday, and somebody at KOB said something to Tom Rutherford, who was still at KOB, hey, you know, we should do some sort of party for our 50th. And so they decided to do something at Coronado Center. And they had discovered that Sid Cutter had a balloon in town. And so Tom contacted Sid and said, can you bring your balloon out? You know, we're going to have this party. And maybe you could get a few friends. And so the conversation, according to Sid and Tom, went, well, yeah, I could probably get a few balloons. I wonder what the largest gathering is. And it was somewhere on the order of 20 or 19. I don't remember which. And Sid made arrangements for 21 balloonists to bring their balloons to Albuquerque and set them up. Now, it's April. And so due to some storms in Chicago and some shipping issues, only 13 of those 21 actually made it to Albuquerque for that first fiesta. So we didn't have the largest gathering, but it was certainly one of the largest with 13. So there's 13 balloons. I mean, you get 13 balloons out on the West Mesa uh, any weekend day now. But back then, 13 balloons was a very big deal. I was out of town, but my wife and kids were in town. They were actually hiking the La Luz Trail on that Saturday morning 
look back in Albuquerque and here were these strange, colorful things flying in the air. So the next day they went out to the Coronado Center, which is where it was held, to see what was going on. So my wife and kids and a couple of friends of my kids, they actually were at the very first one. When I got home on Sunday evening, I found out what I had missed. Said that we had about 20,000 spectators. Nobody ever counted, uh, but uh, the estimate is about 20,000. And everybody was overwhelmed that we would draw that many people. They expected a couple hundred people to come out to see these 13 balloons. Tommy Rutherford, who was there, part of KOB, even says, I brought about 200 passes to let people out by the balloons. When he got there and they realized there was not 200 people, but 20,000 people there, he says he just threw the passes in the back seat of his car and gave up on it. And APD had sent one guy on horseback, one of the horse patrol out there, to try to, to, try to coordinate this whole thing. And also, there's like 20,000 people out there. And all of the balloonists are sitting there with their jaws dropping at, oh, wow. By the following year, Cutter landed the World Balloon Championships to complement what would become the second annual Balloon Fiesta. The seed had been planted. Sid Cutter was a visionary, he was an idea guy, and he was also a do guy. You know, how many of us have great ideas, but we don't know how to implement the ideas? Or some of us are great implementers, but we don't have a creative bone in our head. <laughs> But Sid was all of that. Oh. Sid was an aviation pioneer. He, what I remember about Sid is he was very outgoing, cheerful, uh, always accommodating. Um, and we look back on Sid now as the father of modern hot air ballooning in Albuquerque. Yet the profound impact Cutter would have on ballooning in Albuquerque might never have happened if he hadn't decided to throw a party in 1971 to promote his company and celebrate his mother's birthday. Sid Cutter had a birthday party as an event for his company, his aviation company, and needed to decorate a hangar, and so needed something big and bought a balloon to be the centerpiece of his decorations and then went out and flew it and fell in love. And that one act evolved. The one balloon floating away into the sky and people running after it and being entranced by it. And that multiplied in Albuquerque into two and three and four and 10 and 20 and 100 and hundreds. And the critical mass of that became sufficient to provide the expertise to support an event like the Balloon Fiesta. And that, that really has changed Albuquerque permanently. Sid Cutter was the person that, who got me going on that road of friendship and fun. I and hundreds Maybe thousands of people have Sid Cutter to thank for that. Cutter went on to build the infrastructure for future events, forming the Quad A Ballooning Club to train pilots and build expertise in the field. And he moved the event to the more hospitable month of October in 1975. But the Fiesta remained on shaky financial ground for the first few years. Getting a bunch of uh, crowds together and spectators and balloonists volunteer to come and fly, that was never a problem. The problem was the money. Who's going to pay for this? S Sid Cutter told me one time that he had spent his own personal money, and it may very well have been company money, but he said it was personal money, uh, in the neighborhood of $300,000 to put on the second one and the third one, which is why he said, I can't do this anymore. Sid Cutter uh, formed a corporation and ran the first three balloon fiestas. And 
As he famously said, yes, I know there's money in ballooning because I put it there. It didn't turn out to be a very good business enterprise. After putting on the world championships in 1975, there was a conversation with the city between Sid and other folks about, we can't sustain this. We need some sort of organization to take this project on and to become a year-round organization to put the, the time, the effort, the money into making Balloon Fiesta a reality for Albuquerque. And Mayor Kinney recognized that this was something worth saving and formed a citizens committee to help put on the Balloon Fiesta. And in the next year, that evolved into what is now known as Albuquerque International Balloon Fiesta Incorporated, which is the permanent organization that runs the fiesta. Um, that happened in large part because of Harry and because of some of the people that he recruited to continue the fiesta. And it really needed somebody like a mayor to make sure that the buses would transport people, that the road work was done, that they, they got the water and the trash pickup and everything they needed to to support the fiesta. After there was AIBF Incorporated, uh, that's when we began to realize that maybe from a financial standpoint, we could make it. But those years, 1975, 76, 77, 78, 79, it was touch and go. By the 1980s, organizers began to breathe a little easier. The spectacle that graced Albuquerque skies was now on solid ground. And by the early 1980s, we were pretty positive that we were going to make it. You know, the Fiesta has always been a big thing uh, in my life. I mean, I, I can remember, um, you know, being in school and counting down the days to, you know, when Fiesta would be, you know, having a calendar and marking off each of the days. Uh, so it's always been a big deal to me. Um, I have always known that it was, you know, so, so amazing. And any balloonist in the world knows that Fiesta is something that you have to attend at least once in your flying career. It's like the Mecca of ballooning. You have to make that pilgrimage to Albuquerque if you're a balloonist to, to have said you've flown Albuquerque because that's what everyone does. Um, and the amazing part is that so many of those foreign pilots or pilots around the country, uh, they continue to make that uh, migration to Albuquerque every October because uh, you can't get away from it. It's, uh, it's such a neat event. I think it was probably in the late 80s, early 90s, that it really started to become maybe an internationally recognized big deal. I mean, it, was, it always has been in the ballooning community, but it's now internationally known, um, and it's not a big deal just in the ballooning world, but if you look at the big events around the country, you know, things like the Kentucky Derby, the Indianapolis 500, the Tournament of Roses, uh, the Rose Parade. You know, the Balloon Fiesta gets mentioned in the same breath as these big events. I don't think I ever took the time to think about, wow, this could really be big. Um, if there is one of those moments, it might be when I realized that as many people watched us on social media, on Balloon Fiesta Live, as we had bodies on the field that year. So to know that, to look at the crowds and say, wow, that's a lot of people out there. And then to realize there's that many more watching us online for what, it, what you know, it's like, wow. This thing really is huge. Two, one, flicker burn. There we go. With innovative events like the Balloon Glow and Special Shapes Rodeo, the Fiesta evolves with every passing year. And with each new Fiesta, spectators and balloonists alike walk away with a multitude of memories. One of my most memorable ones, I was chief launch, and it was the first year we went to a thousand balloons. We actually launched a thousand balloons for a couple of years um, and I was chief launch that year so that was a big challenge and I was 
obviously very nervous because I had to expand the launch director group from about 40 people to about 90 people in order to accommodate this. Um, and so, yeah, there was a lot of training that went on. There was a lot of, um, we ha it was a whole new field. And this first year we moved to this field. So it, there was a lot of change. And that morning I got up and uh, got up onto the tower and there was Tom Selleck. <laughs> so I got to meet Tom Selleck. It was like, wow. <laughs> but we got, we got all thousand balloons off the ground safely. From the early days, for me, it was always about the balloons. Uh, always loved the balloons. It was probably only a couple of years after I first volunteered out here with balloons. I started crewing for some folks, and then I ended up full time on a balloon crew. And it was always about the balloons and the crew, the people that you met, the people that you dealt with, and the teamwork and the friendships that you built. And those have continued to build over all of the years. Um, yes, it's gotten bigger, it's gotten smaller as far as the number of balloons, but the circle of friends continues to grow. If I were to pick uh, yeah, one uh, Fiesta uh, a, a memory would be with uh, uh, winning the America's Challenge gas balloon race with my wife, uh, Tammy. She's also a gas balloon pilot as well as a hot air pilot. And uh, we, uh, we landed up in the, uh, the wilds of Canada um, in the uh, America's Challenge gas balloon race. Uh, we went further than anybody, but it also uh, we went so far that we had to be uh, rescued by helicopter. Um, it was, uh, we were up in the woods 75 miles past the last road and uh, had to be picked up by helicopter and have the balloon uh, pulled out by helicopter as well. So uh, an expensive memory, but a, a good one. <laughs> one of my favorite flying stories was um, we were, in those days you could land, if, as long as you were legal, you could land in a big field, change passengers and take off again. And I landed in a field that was one of the city golf parks up in the Northeast Heights and, uh, and then took off. And so, of course, when you take off, you're pretty close to the ground until you gain some altitude. We took off um, and I had a, a very close friend uh, who was the passenger that day <clears throat> and we took off and we were immediately only uh, 50 feet off the ground, maybe 75 feet off the ground, uh, going over a residential area. And here was a, here was a, a house with a, with a second story porch on it. And a man, bare naked, came out on that porch, looking around, trying to see what was going on, because you could hear the balloons. He looked up, saw us, realized he was naked, grabbed the curtain, pulled the curtain down across his body, uh, said a few uh, words that we're not allowed to repeat on the video, and of course, we were gone. All that took, what, five seconds? Can you imagine the story that guy <laughs> told? Dad must have been running for mayor. I'm flying low, dogs are barking, Dad's leaning out of the basket, waving to people who are standing in their backyard, saying, hi, I'm Harry Kinney, vote for me. The Balloon Fiesta, of course, is held in October. And in September 2001, as everyone knows, we had 9-11, which was a terrible tragedy and had an immediate impact on the Balloon Fiesta because it grounded all aviation. And balloonists are aircraft, and so, of course, we couldn't fly just like everybody else couldn't fly. And there were some real fears that Balloon Fiesta wouldn't even happen that year. You know, the city government and they all worked with our congressional delegation and finally got permission to open up balloon operations. So we came out and, and had a Balloon Fiesta and, and it was a real catharsis, I think for everybody, but especially for my, my, my little group of friends that I was ballooning with at that point. 
A lot of my crew people were from New York. Uh, a couple of them were retired firefighters. Um, they knew a lot of people that were killed at the Twin Towers. Um, another crew member of mine uh, works in financial services. She knew 108 people that were killed in, in the uh, collapse of the World Trade Center. Um, so it had been a very traumatic few weeks. And so Balloon Fiesta became this big catharsis. It was something we could actually do to say, okay, you guys, this is not going to defeat us. We are going to go on. And, and we did. It was, it, it was obviously a, a great tragedy, but it was also one of the high points of the Balloon Fiesta's history, and that it really helped this community and the ballooning community uh, recover from what was a very, very bad moment. The Fiesta continues to rack up milestones, hosting the first America's Cup Challenge gas balloon race in 1995, setting a launch record with 1,019 balloons in 2000, grassing in the entire launch field in 2001. From the hot air balloon capital of the world, this is the 46th edition of the Albuquerque International Balloon Fiesta, presented by Canon. The world's premier ballooning event is happening now in Albuquerque, New Mexico. This is Balloon Fiesta Live, online and on the air. Premiering a live stream of the event in 2017 and repeatedly burnishing its reputation as the world's most photographed event. Oh, and rumor is the breakfast burrito was invented here. Unfortunately, the Fiesta marked another milestone in 2020. Due to the COVID pandemic, officials canceled the event for the first time since 1972. Balloon Fiesta veteran Tom McConnell summed up the disappointment. It can't be October without the smell of roasting chilies in the air, um, uh, occasional uh, pignon fireplace smell, and a whole bunch of balloons flying. It just doesn't seem right that we have October and we don't have Balloon Fiesta. But with the 50th anniversary on the horizon, ballooning aficionados are hopeful the Fiesta will return bigger and better than ever. And just given the uncertainties and the potency of the uh, coronavirus, it, you know, you would, you would feel absolutely terrible if people came to the balloon Fiesta and came away ill. You'd, and safety is always first. You just can't risk that. So. We're terribly disappointed that we can't do it, but it's the safe and the right thing to do, and we'll be back.